this free int uh, free week one class for our eight week uh, feature writing boot camp program. Uh, my name is Connor, and uh, if you weren't here for the first half of this, we're going over log lines and giving feedback to log lines so the, the rest of the students can be working on this throughout the rest of the class, and they can post an updated one at the end if they want to. After this, we're going to do um, lecture slides on premise and why we choose the stories we're choosing, and then we'll return for more feedback at the end. Excuse me. All right, let's um, see what we have next. Um, one second. Okay, we just did Cascade. Um, let's go down to Vermin with Anto. Are you there, Anto? Uh, yes, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you read your logline for us? Okay. Yeah, sure. So, uh, the title's for Vermin. Uh, I'm still working on it. I don't have a lot of ideas, and I can put the logline, I think, right here on the Discord right now. So, that's it. And the logline is like, uh, living in poverty, Nito learns that he has inherited millions in debt from his father, who has gone missing. He must put his skills to the test while surviving the answers and the law while going home. This. All right. Thanks for this. Um, let me bring that up on the screen like this so we can all see that. So, um, living in poverty, Peter learns he's inherited millions in debt from his father who has gone missing. He puts his skills to the test while surviving gangsters, the law, and going homeless. Okay, so let's try to refine this a little bit. Um, first of all, let's try to just pick two genres for the most part. So maybe we'll say thriller and drama for this one, or crime drama, maybe. Um, comps, these aren't quite comps. These, these are just sort of the um, subjects of the movie. Comps would be like other movies that we would compare it to. Um, so these would be titles, but it's good to have at least some some ideas of the the, the sorts of things that are going to be in here. We don't need to include character names, um, so delete character names. And instead, you want to describe your character in terms of an adjective and then a noun, right? So we might say something like, living in poverty, a geeky teenager, right? Or however you want to describe your main character, because we don't know who Peter is. So give us a little a little okay. description for the character. He learns uh, he's okay. inherited millions in debt. Is that what causes him to go into poverty? Uh, no, not actually. So uh, if you got time, can I just uh, uh, okay? The, so this is whole thing. Uh, it's it's just people. Uh, they live in the forest and uh, they just they just live really located by the government. But they're not given any uh, basic resources to survive. So they just live in the huts uh, in urban areas. So they don't have electricity, shelter, food, anything. So it's it's people with that. Uh, and there's a huge story behind it. There's a huge backstory that uh, the character has. Uh, no, that is not what has caused poverty. Uh, that, that is not what has caused him to go into death. Uh, it's more like the identity theft and the fake bank accounts created and everything. So th there's a lot going on in the story. Uh, in, uh, and uh, com uh, compressing it all into a log line is like kind of difficult for me. I'm having a little trouble understanding. I'm sorry to say, it's, I think it's the connection or like the a little bit of distortion over the mic that's making it difficult to hear exactly. I think I, I heard most of what you said about him. He's living in the woods. He's living off the grid. Um, all of that. So you're saying that's not what caused him to go into poverty. He's already living in poverty, and then he gets millions more in debt, I guess is what you're saying, right? Um, exactly, exactly. Yes. Uh, okay, I'm with you there. Um, so let's try to find the inciting incident, right? So you might want to start with when his father goes missing. Um, if, is that what starts the story, or is the, him getting all this yes. debt, is that what starts the story? Isn't, isn't the fact that his uh, father it, is missing, it's... that's the reason he gets the debt, right? Yes, exactly. That's, okay. that's the reason. Okay, so when his father goes missing, and you might want to just explain, like, maybe estranged or whatever it is that, however we describe that relationship, maybe his beloved father, like, whatever, whatever, however we describe the relationship to the dad. So let's just say when his estranged father goes missing, a forest dwelling, um, a homeless, I guess, well, it's a little redundant, something like that, a forest dweller uh, must emerge, and um, maybe we would say, uh, you're saying he has to put his skills to the test 
to survive gangsters, the law, and going homeless. Well, he's already homeless, right? So I guess he's not going homeless currently. Um, he must... Uh, well, they, go ahead. Uh, these, these people, they live in the woods, but they, they are pretty well to do. They have properties, uh, they have homes there. Oh, they do? Okay. Uh, so yeah, they just, so, they so just live in... They're probably tribal. They're, they're like indigenous people. Okay, 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 I see. Yeah. Um, but... I think that if he's if so he's leaving his home, we understand that he's not gonna be in his area. Of, he's not gonna be in the, his uh, home turf, right? So he must. We might say something yeah. like he must uh, traverse a dangerous city, something like that. Maybe just describe like where it is that he has to go. And um, essentially, I think you're is, are you trying to say he's trying to find his dad. Is that his goal? Yeah, that, that's one of his goals. Uh, but at the same time. Uh, time to find his dad because his dad might be dead there's no time to find him why what was it uh so dad might be dead he might be dead okay but the main yeah. character doesn't know for sure so he's trying to find him and i guess that's what kicks off the story so even if he has other yes. goals we, we probably still want to frame it around just one easily expressible kind of uh conflict right so we must um we might yeah. say something like he has to uh we and we might get very specific we might say he has to um, delve into the, I don't know, the, uh, we might say, where, whatever city this takes place in. Um, what city, uh, what part of the world are, are you thinking this takes place in? Uh, this takes place in India, especially the central India, where there's a huge conflict going on regarding this. Okay, so you might want to, I don't know the name of the city, but we might say something like, you know, uh, just describe it in terms right, of he yeah. must delve into the Mumbai nightlife or the world of, you know, like pick a city and then just describe what kind of world is he entering? When I say, like, Mumbai, organized crime, something like yeah, that, um, crime, yeah. in order to find him. And try to keep it simple. Just one sentence. I like that you mentioned he's has to... You're giving a, a, a couple examples of obstacles. Gangsters, the law, things like that. But we can sort of imply that um, and uh, still have a really effective logline. So put the inciting incident first. Make sure that we know what's kicking the story off. So when his father goes missing... This guy who lives in a rural, off-the-grid area has to go into the big city to find him. That's the movie, right? Yes. Okay. So I would, tr yeah, try to write it in these terms kind of like this. You don't you don't have to use the exact words or wording that I'm using here. But, um, and obviously, okay. p pick your own specifics in terms of the city and the relationship and all of that. Um, but make sure that that relationship is kind of clear. Um, because with drama especially, if you find the, that central relationship, you'll find the story. So we might understand if they're estranged, this is going to be the main character is trying to heal or fix that relationship, um, something like that. Uh, and it's just going to give a little more context for the journey. Um, but I can totally see okay. the movie. I, I like the, the setup. I would definitely mention the fact that he, like I, I wrote a forest dweller here, which might not be the best term necessarily. Maybe you have a better term there, but it does emphasize the fact that he was living in the woods before, right? He was, a, he's like, a um, he's, uh, he's not part of society. And now he has to enter society in order to accomplish his goal. Yeah. So, so, uh, uh a bit of, uh, uh so the, the guy is exactly a forest runner. He's highly educated. It's just that he can't find a job in the society because it doesn't fit anywhere. Okay. Yeah. So it's a, you. You'll have to like just use your own. You'll have to use your own words to to describe exactly okay. the situation here. Um, we might yeah. say like you know a uh, an overeducated man living off the grid, something like that. Just use your own words and, and find okay. how you want to express who the character is. But I've, it's just nice irony to go from, and, and we're always looking for irony in a premise, right? So guy who lives in nature now has yeah. to go into the big city is just a, a nice hook for the movie, and it it's easy to see. So I would rephrase some, something like along these terms, um, and that will be a much stronger logline and start to answer a lot of those questions that we have for loglines. Um, any big questions on this one? All right, thank you for this. Looking forward to seeing no, more of that. Thank you. Right. Looks like we have one more to do, and then we'll go to, or do we have two more? I think we have two. All right, let's go to Carmen with Gods of Sutter Streets, horror comedy, one of my favorite genres. Are you here, Carmen? 
Can you read this for us? When a skeptical ghost tour guide becomes a primary suspect in a series of ritual killings, he must put a stop to the human sacrificing Aztec cultists threatening to bring about an era ending earthquake. All right. Oh, missing Go ahead. On that. Am, I, am I missing stakes? No. Era ending earthquake oh. sounds like pretty big stakes. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is good. a true story. I mean, it's not like it's a true story in the world of the Aztec believing peoples of the world. You know what I mean? You mean this is like a piece a, of folklore that exists, right? Okay. I see yeah. what you mean. And when you said this is a true story, I was like, "This uh, really? This happened? I don't know, Carmen." But <laughs> but you mean this is a, an existing? You're you're working with folklore, world folklore, is what you're saying. Um, that's fine. Yes. Okay, Th that's all good. So Let's... I have one. That... Go ahead. I came up with um, a lot of the beats already. Um, it looks like a whole list of bullet points, and then going into some theme cards as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know how solid it really is because I haven't looked at it in a long time, you know? Mm -hmm. And I haven't really thought about it that much either in, in a while. So, But I can see the beginning of the movie, mm -hmm. and um, that kind of sets the stage for what's going to happen. And so the whole thing of him being... I know that this isn't really a flaw, but part of his flaw, which is part of the conflict the central um well not really the central conflict i don't know i might not know what i'm talking about but um he you know he's having an estranged relationship with the father because he was accepted into a a university and because he struggles with um a severe form of dyslexia okay he turned down the acceptance into the school and became the ghost tour guide. And so there is that little bit of, um, of the irony, you know, for um, he's going to use the Aztec calendar to put a stop to this, um, to this plan. I don't have this whole thing figured out yet. That's okay. Um, this is looking really good. You know. um, a lot of the, 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 the fundamentals are here. When a skeptical ghost tour guide becomes a primary suspect in a series of ritual killings, the only thing that I added was he discovers that a human sacrificing Aztec cult is responsible and must stop them from bringing about an era-ending earthquake. I think there was just that sort of middle step um, that was missing here, because you sort of are framing this as two separate sets of stakes. The first one being, guy needs to clear his name from murder, and then it escalates to the point of, oh, I discovered that the murderers are actually doing the murders to end the world. And so now, since I'm the only one that knows about that, I need to stop them. So I think we need to add the part where he discovers that the cult is responsible. Um, that, that aside, I don't think you need much else here. Like, sometimes we, it can be helpful to add a central relationship if a story needs a little more spice or if a logline needs a little more interest. But you've got so much here as is that I can totally see this. And I don't, I wouldn't think that you needed to add a central relationship um, because we have a lot going on here. Um, I think this is super strong um, and uh, I can totally see the character. I can see the arc of it. Um, and I like how I can already s sort of imagine how this escalates. Like probably around the midpoint, we discover that um, this, or like around uh, the break into two, we discover, oh wow, it's a cult responsible for this. The midpoint is we learn they're gonna end the world and so I just like how this builds a lot. And I think this is really strong. So that being said, what you just said, because um, I'm looking at my beat sheet. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so the catalyst, what I have now is the first Taurus goes missing and is found murdered, right? Mm -hmm. I was thinking pulling the heart out of the chest would be a good, um, but I just, I was having a problem with that imagery with comedy. Uh, so then I thought you can do that. No, oh, okay. no, not at all. <laughs> You're fine. There, there's all kinds of stuff like this. Shaun of the Dead is one of the is like a pretty violent horror comedy, um, and has like tons of gore. You can have as much gore as you want in a comedy. People are really used to dark comedy nowadays. 
I think stuff like BoJack Horseman and the boys on T, like the boys especially, being like an example of you won't even believe how violent comedy can get nowadays. Uh, so no, don't worry about that at all. You can do heart ripping out. You can do people getting eaten. You can do like just anything you can think of. Okay. So um, you said the break, because I'm way off what you said, I think, um, with the break into two and the midpoint at this point. Oh, that's okay. We're, do have... Yeah. D- don't worry. About, I'm, these are just my first thought assumptions. Like, the, don't don't worry too much about okay. if it matches my first uh, f- first flinch of an, of an expectation of what it would be. That's just me thinking, oh, can I imagine what this might be? So don't worry about that. The log line's really strong. Um, we'll, we'll get to structure later. Okay, then I'll just save this. Okay, okay great. Okay. Thank you, Carmen. This is looking really good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, do we have one more? Mandy from APA. Well, there's already a movie called Mandy, which was quite popular, but maybe this one, uh, you can either find another title, or maybe there's a great reason it has to be Mandy. I don't know yet. Go ahead and read this out for us and tell us about this. Are you here, APA? Maybe not. Oh, he looks like he's muted, actually. Hang on, let me unmute him. All right, go ahead and speak now. Uh, Actually, I just want to say, I just chose Andy because I can already think of anything else. That's okay. It's one of the characters' name, um, but the logline is Andrew forced into organized crime at a young age, unknowingly introduced two friends to the world of human trafficking under the Henderson group. Um, they must seek out help or sink in the depths of despair. <laughs> depths, perhaps. Um, this is like a story about like kids getting indoctrinated into like organized crime one by one, mm-hmm. and the. Um, they're working under a powerful group organization called the Henderson Group, and they soon get over, get like super deep in their heads. So they need to gather their courage to leave. They also need to seek help from outside in order to get out. Okay, cool. So when you say that he introduces friends to the world of human trafficking, does that mean he's that the friends are now being trafficked or they are becoming traffickers? Um, they're gonna, I mean, they're not gonna be traffickers, they're gonna play, like, different roles, organization, like, one is actually gonna be a trafficker, the other one is, they're gonna be, um, as somewhat a victim, but also someone accidentally helps them, unknowingly. Hmm. So when you say unknowingly. That, that's okay. So when you say unknowingly, you mean he doesn't mean to do this? Yeah. This is like, um, when I wrote this log line, I pretty much took like a portion of the story. It's pretty much like, and like, Andrew, like Andrew is actually about age 10. So he's like playing with his friends and he's supposed to do this. Like, he's a hitman, and he's supposed to do this job, and he brought his friends along, and they found a dead body, and they meet a member of this organization, and then um, the organization recruits the other kids, and then the story progresses from there. Okay, so I think that we may not need this line here about how he's well first of all we don't need character names no one's going to remember the character name or organization names so it's just confusing to have them we want to describe the characters in terms of adjective noun so i'm not sure that we would need to say forced into crime at a young age we might say something like a reluctant hitman or something like that what how it, don't don't feel that you have to use these exact words but just you'll want to describe the character in terms like that right just adjective noun Um, so I think you're saying he uh, he sort of gets his friends involved in human trafficking, um, accidentally gets his friends. But so are, let me just clarify this. Do they want to be working there or do they not? 
are, are they sort of forced to work in this organization? Um, one of them wants to work there. The other, like, because he saw something that he really wants to do. The other one then does not at all. Okay, so it might be something like when a reluctant hitman's you know, best friend, and maybe you want to just pick the person who does not want to be involved and have it, just frame it a little bit more about that relationship rather than trying to include both of them if they both have very different things going on. Um, <clears throat> we might say something like when a reluctant, or hitman's, uh, whatever it is, when a reluctant criminal's best friend gets, um, you know, forced into the world of human trafficking, he must do what? Rescue his friends or find a way to get them out of the situation? Is that right? Um, he must, I mean, want to do it like, at the rescue, but also I want to seek outside help because I want to be a lesson to, like, people who, um, maybe the CC human trafficking and they are willing to, like, just extend some help to get someone out. Okay, I can see that. It's a, it's a little bit nuanced for a logline, though. We can kind of express that in a phrase, something like, he has to find a way to save them before bad thing happens, right? So we could say, he must find a way to save him or her before they get sold overseas, or something like that. Um, whatever the stakes or the ticking clock are, that's what you'll just want to um, include here as well. Sink into the depths of despair just sounds a little bit internal and maybe not like it wouldn't quite belong into a logline. We want to be a little bit more concrete and tangible with the stakes, so before they get killed, before they get sold, before he loses them forever, something like that. Um, and I think that all of that will do a lot of work to simplifying this and making this really clear. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't think of an ending. That's, oh, you don't have to have an ending. Yeah. That, that's okay. So the, in a log line, you don't go all the way through to the end. We just go about to the halfway mark, right? So he has to find a way to save them before blank before they get sold and that would sort of allow the reader to imagine like the second half of the movie more or less you don't have to take us all the way through to the end okay hopefully does, does that give you some good ideas and some uh some inspiration to to think of how you might simplify and express this idea yes awesome thank you so much for sharing this thank you so um, I think that was all of them that was posted um, when I set out, sent out the first call. There may have been a few more that have been posted since then, but since we're down to our last half hour, I do want to make sure that we're getting through a couple of these slides as you guys are working to refine what we have. If I need to, I can stay a little bit late to um, uh, make sure everyone gets good feedback. So let's just look at our um, slides here and let's talk a little bit about why this movie, why this story. Um, so that's the name of this class is why this story and often the answer is just going to be something like well uh because i can write this or because it sounds cool and those are perfectly fine and valid reasons to want to write something but you might also think of this in terms of this is something that is a question that i've wondered about in my life this is a, a situation that i've been in or some something that i have experience with that i want to make some kind of point about or share with the world you might think in terms of how what makes this idea universally relevant, as in this could apply to anyone in any culture in any time, like we could watch this in 50 years, people would still understand it fine. Um, or they could watch it, you know, 100 years in the past, and not everything would make sense, but the basics of it would. That's what we're usually looking for. And a really solid feature film premise is something that feels relatable, and that we understand what the character wants, because they want some version of something that we ourselves want, right? And by just making stories about those things that we all want and that matter to all of us, things like love, life and death, friends, family, you know, success, revenge, riches, greed, like these things that are sort of built into human nature, it can always, it will always be sort of universally relevant in some way because it's about people struggling with the things that makes them human. But then you might ask yourself also this question, what makes this relevant today? And we've had some actually, we've had some great <clears throat> long lines in class today that revolve around things like the modern day human trafficking trade, or um, you know, uh, people who live off the grid who might have to interact with society, things like that that are especially relevant today. That you might think 
if I can include some piece of that too, then this will start to feel really well-rounded as a premise. The idea that your story might touch on topics which have come to prominence in the news or in day-to-day -day life just nowadays, or it's something that just feels like it is relevant. And in the best case scenario, your, te your story might take a topic which is relevant recently and use that in fact as the backdrop or key component of a more universal idea. So we have a story about people you know, living off the grid and we have a story about someone trying to find a missing, his missing father. Those together can easily be both universally relevant and relevant now. So maybe just in your sketchbook, start thinking of ideas how does this touch on both of these concepts and how can I think to either make it more universally relevant or make it more relevant today? If it's not universally relevant enough, then your character, chances are, they want something that the audience can't really relate to wanting. Um, and that could be a problem. Like, ask yourself, does everybody want some version of that thing? And if so, you may have to just carefully express what that thing is. Relevant today, you may have to just go out in the world and think about what's happening now. It doesn't have to always be tied to something in the news, but maybe just be thinking of why is this particularly something that people need to see or some point that I'd like to make today. It's okay if you don't have a perfect answer for this, and not every movie needs to be some amazing combination of, of relevant ideas, but it can help, and it can just help guide your construction of premises if you're thinking of what, what would be something that in, in 100 years would be relevant but is also relevant right now. Um, this was something that came a lot, up a lot when I was pitching on uh, The Twilight Zone. I pitched on the CBS Twilight Zone reboot, and I wrote the Twilight Zone VR game uh, pitch documents. And this was something I talked about quite frequently in that process. Um, what else? Uh, the premise is the driving force behind why everything's happening on screen. And I talked a little about, I should probably have a slide on just the sauce that I keep talking about. That's usually going to come down to hook, right? Because we can understand what a movie is totally fine, but it doesn't necessarily mean somebody wants to see it, right? And you have to imagine people who are going to be reading these things are usually going to want to read a genre that they like and they enjoy. And people who read scripts and are a big fan of a genre, chances are have read and seen a lot of that kind of story. So I could just give you something like, well, when he's captured by a serial killer, uh, man needs to escape from the serial killer or else be killed by the killer. And that, we can see the story, but it sort of feels like the shark movie syndrome where it's like when she's attacked by a shark, a woman must defeat the shark or she'll be killed by the shark. It's like, okay, I can only imagine sort of a few scenes of that, and it doesn't really compel me to check that out. Now, if you tell me it's a shark that shoots lava from its mouth, then suddenly I'm a little bit more interested, I'm right? I'm like, that isn't something I've seen exactly before. Or if you say it's about a possessed shark or a ghost shark, or a demon shark, or it's a guy who runs a cult of sharks. All of these are just gonna start to get people excited. It's like some version of this that they understand the basics of, but they haven't seen that exact thing before. That's the sauce. The sauce is saying, I can see, or, well, I'll say, a log line is saying, I can, or a strong log line says, makes your reader say, I can see the movie. Having adequate levels of spicy sauce says, I need to see that movie. Like, I have to check that out. And that's sort of what we're chasing. It, it may be that you have a more execution-dependent movie that doesn't necessarily leap off the logline, but try to learn these skills and try to learn to write a, a logline that people feel compelled to read because this is going to determine your success as a feature writer if you can get people excited about your ideas. Um, it is the answer to the question, what is it about? Um, let's skip this slide for now. Uh, it, the premise is the main criteria by which people judge if they want to read your work, and the logline is the expression of your premise. So... We're implying a genre with that as well, which determines who would have the interest or ability to make a movie like that in the first place. So you need to know what your genre is really, really well, like the back of your hand. And to that end, don't include three or more genres because then it will start to seem like a soup of nonsense, as I often say. It's going to be like chocolate, kiwi, pineapple, vanilla, uh, you know, cheese. And on, on top of all that, it's like, what does that even taste like anymore? It tastes like nothing. So narrow this down to two genres, your most relevant you know, way of describing those genres, the two that you think most clearly expresses what this is. A strong premise is the barometer for the quality of a script a lot of the time. Um, not every time, but a lot of the time. Um, and we're trying to manage, and as, as we're trying to establish, maintain, and manage the idea of reader confidence. Reader confidence you can almost imagine as an invisible bar, like a health bar in a video game, that every time something damages it, it goes down to a point until it hits a threshold where they will stop paying attention and they will start skimming. And so every mistake and every everything that's off, especially in the first couple of pages, it's like it deals double damage. Um, it's damaging that confidence even more. If you have a typo in your first line, 
confidence massively down. If you have a typo on page 50, no one cares. If they're compelled and they're interested, they won't care. But remember that you're damaging confidence. It's like you get double fines in a construction zone on the road, right? You will In the first 10 pages, every misstep or mistake or thing that does not pull us into the story is pushing us out of the story. Um, what else? Uh, high, let's talk high concept versus execution dependent a little bit. So what does high concept mean? This is typically the kind of logline and the type, type of movie that we're trying to teach you how to write because this is kind of one of the great skills of being a feature screenwriter is can you come up with and execute high concept premises in an effective and efficient way? High concept does not mean more complicated. A movie that is about you know physics and math and war and love and death and all these things is not necessarily high concept. It doesn't have anything to do with the genre or the budget or the subject matter. You can have a high concept movie that is a single location comedy, or you can have a, a high concept movie that is a you know galaxy spanning giant epic adventure. It is a self-contained and engaging premise with broad appeal. Usually it's gonna be pretty simply as expressed as this thing meets that thing, it, well, not every single time, but it's going to be something we can just say in one sentence and somebody will say, oh, that sounds interesting. That sounds like it delivers on the emotional experience that you're offering it will bloom in the mind to suggest a conflict, a structure, and the whole thing. We can say, look at this movie, Liar Liar, from, this is, you know, the kind of, from the 90s, which was the, the heyday of the high concept spec sale. What is this about? Oh, Jim Carrey plays a kind of a jerk lawyer. He gets cursed so that he can't lie for one day. And with just that one idea, we can start to imagine all the different conflicts that would result from the, from the idea of a, a lawyer who lies all the time now cannot lie. So we can start to see situations in which, because of this curse, he is getting into lots and lots of trouble. He is losing his court cases because he can't use his normal tactics. He's forced to sort of tell the truth and grow as a person and become the kind of guy that doesn't need to lie anymore, the guy that's not a liar anymore. I can see the entire character journey. I can see the entire thing. And I know I've seen this movie many times. It's very good. But even if I hadn't, just that one sentence and just the, the basics of that premise would tell me, oh, this is a solid concept. This is something that I want to see. Something else, we have Shanghai Noon, one of my favorite movies. Uh, it's this meets that. We have Kung Fu Guy in the Wild West, Shanghai Noon. There's The title expresses the irony or the, the juxtaposition of the premise perfectly. We have a fish out of water scenario where a Kung Fu Guy um, who is, you know, Jackie Chan's character is a royal imperial guard in um, the 1800s who, hit, when the princess gets kidnapped that he's supposed to protect, he has to go to America, to the Wild West, to save her. And he teams up with a kind of uh, an arrogant, wacky cowboy to do it. Um, so that's a really simple idea. Kung Fu Guy goes to the Old West to rescue the princess. Really simple action adventure stakes. Really easy concept. And also, we can very clearly imagine what the kind of fun and games of this premise would be. We can think of, oh, I can. what are the sort of set pieces in a kung fu movie? Okay, we're going to be doing those now in the Old West with horse chases and guys flipping off of roofs and falling off of horses and, like, all of the sort of conflicts that we can imagine in both of those movies combined into one. It's like chocolate and peanut butter. It's not like chocolate, peanut butter, kiwi, strawberry, pineapple. Just two flavors together makes a really strong, high-concept idea. Yesterday is another one that I really like a lot. It's not necessarily this meets that, but it's about a struggling musician who, when some supernatural event happens, he gets hit by a car, and when he wakes up, he's in a world where the Beatles don't exist, and now he en endeavors to recreate their discography and become famous as if he is the Beatles, right? Because he knows all their songs by heart, he's the biggest fan, and so now he's going to invent the Beatles music and become a celebrity. This super wish fulfillment -y kind of fantasy um, and also really, really clear kinds of fun and games that we'd see in this because we can imagine just a regular dude. Um, he's becoming a celebrity overnight, basically, because he has access to these songs that no one remembers exists anymore. So I can very clearly see the trajectory of the character. He's becoming richer. He's losing touch with his old friends. He has to decide, does fame is fame more important than what he really wants? Is it going to stop him from getting what he wants? I can just see the whole thing. So I hope this is clear, like what high concept is, and maybe we can look at the opposite to sort of get a sense of what uh, what is not high concept. And this will tell us, maybe this will clarify what high concept is by seeing its opposite, I guess I should say. So execution dependent is going to rely on complex character study, maybe cinematography, choreography, or anything else that would just relate to the making of that movie. 
um, if we have to say something like, this will be a comedy just because, believe me, the characters will just be funny, then chances are the premise itself is not that funny, and that's not going to be... It's going to just depend how you execute it. It's execution dependent. Um, maybe it will be good, maybe not, but it's rare that somebody will request to read an execution, a super execution dependent logline um, unless you're paying them to. Like This is not the kind of thing that uh, usually gets people as excited as a high concept logline just in the Hollywood kind of world. If you can make that movie yourself, like Whiplash is, is a fantastic movie and it was made, you know, funded by making a short film first to sort of prove that it worked. Um, and the filmmaker pioneered it himself and he really did the work of convincing us that this would be a really riveting story. But the logline itself probably would not have sold this, which it becomes clear to then why he had to make a short film to express how this would be so intense. It's about a guy who wants to be a jazz drummer. He's got a mean teacher. Does that sound like a super compelling drama? Not really, but the movie totally sells us on it, and it's it depended on the execution. The execution was excellent, so the movie was excellent. But this would probably not like get people super psyched to read it, um, unless you were already a well-respected screenwriter like he was. Um, Sci-fi or fantasy or really intangible types of goals or stakes where something like a princess must destroy an obelisk to defeat a warlord's forces just starts to feel a little bit... Um, it, 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 depending on how you phrase it, it can just be hard to picture or hard to wrap our head around. Like, he's trying to save the crystal subsector. It's like, we don't know what that is. Is that his home? Is that, like, a bunch of planets? Is that, like, a kingdom? What is that, exactly? So try not to use these terms when possible that only make sense in, the, in terms of your story. Um... Anything with just this essential but really difficult to convey style or world, like John Wick is a great example of this. It just sounds like a right down the middle, really kind of average hitman revenge story. Um, and watching it, you'll see it's not really. It feels cooler than most of them. It feels more stylish. The choreography is awesome. The cinematography is awesome. The, the Keanu is great. Like it, the movie's great because all those things are great. But from just a logline, it comes across as a bit more execution dependent which this still sold as a spec it should tell you that it's not an absolute death sentence to be writing something execution dependent but it will come with a lot of challenges and when possible try to focus on learning to write high concept ideas but then again if you're just starting out don't get too fixated on this don't get let this trip you up too much just focus on staying excited for your work working on it consistently and keeping your momentum high so that you finish on the time frame that you set out for yourself. You want to be writing outlines that you can stick to and finishing them and finishing the, the scripts within the, the time frame that you set out for yourself. Eight to 12 weeks usually, eight weeks for this, uh, for this boot camp. All right, um, so uh, let me check how much time we have. We have 15 minutes. Um, I think I have one or two log lines I did not get to from before. You can also post if you updated yours and you have a... Uh, I can sort of give you the thumbs up and go ahead. Go, feel free to post that. I'm going to do like one more slide, so post it while I'm talking, and then I'll come back, and for our last 10 minutes, I will get to all the log lines that you guys have shared or ones that I've missed from before. Okay, last couple things. What else do we want to know? Comps, are, this meets that. Comps, it's kind of dumb to pick these for the most part, but managers really like these. People in the industry use these all the time. With comps, you're going to pick two movies, um, at least, or at least one of them should be a movie. One of them can be a TV show or a play or a book or a game or something like that if it, is, if it clarifies what you're doing, right? I mean, we could often think of this in terms of what is the world of the first thing but with the style or the approach of the second thing. You don't always have to use that, but um, it helps. You typically want to be thinking of things that people will know. You're not going to earn bonus points by the audience not having heard of your comps. So if you pick something that's like an obscure French art house movie as one of your comparative titles, and your reader is like, "I just don't know what that is," it doesn't. They're not going to be excited to go look it up. They're going to be less likely to read the script. Um, what else about comps? Uh, don't pick trendy things that are way over comped in the genre if you can help it but if you're just starting don't worry too much about that just don't just try not to be too obscure don't try this is not a great opportunity to show off this is an opportunity to convey what is the world of this and what is the style of this more than anything else um let's look at sketchbook stuff um quickly before uh we go into logline portion so 
Um, sketchbook, I think we've all hopefully made by now, and you guys have started to fill out. There's no right or wrong things to include in these, but this is just a place to collect your notes and sketches and ideas all um, for your story before you begin and all throughout the writing process. You'll always be coming back to this, fleshing this out, writing ideas for moments from the story or characters in the story, snippets of dialogue, research for the setting and the world, pictures, links to videos, drawings, or anything that just inspires your writing. Titles, don't worry way too much about that right now, but it's often going to be the last piece of a high concept premise. It explains why the premise is ironic or hooky, or I should say a good title clarifies the hook. It's a tool to get someone to read the work, so I would typically try to pick a title that um, the audience can uh, easily remember. Um, blockbuster moments are going to be those, and we'll, this is just a preview of, of upcoming classes, don't worry way too much about this yet. But you might just consider writing in your sketchbook some of those really awesome moments that are going to happen in your story, even if you don't know exactly how or in what context they'll happen. If you're like, I'm writing an action movie, I've always wanted to see um, a kung fu fight while people are bungee jumping. Then you'd write bungee jumping kung fu fight on your list of blockbuster moments, even if you have no idea how we're going to get there. So you're trying to come up with good stuff in your arsenal or in your palette of paints for you to then later use. So let your mind really go crazy and think of what would just be cool to see in this movie. What are some moments you'd want to see? They don't need context. You're just trying to come up with cool stuff. And a big part of being a writer is just identifying what do I think is cool? What do I think is, is would be awesome to see? So you might need to just get in touch with your own taste and what do you find fascinating? What would just, what make you stand up and cheer in your seat? Um, don't worry too much about titles now. Um, last thing I will say, character. Don't give us character names. Describe your character in terms of adjective nouns so that we get who this is for the purposes of the story. And in the log line, you're pretty much trying to imply their journey that they are going to make. So we want to know their objective. We want to know what's standing in the way. And we want to know why we care. So like maybe a central relationship can clarify this. Or maybe we see uh, why your character has this so important to them. But the motivation of the character should just be really clear from the log line itself. Okay, let's post for our last section of class, updated log lines and maybe new ones that I didn't get to. And we'll try to get to as many as we can um, in our last few minutes here. So um, let me see one that I didn't get to before. It was, we had Nadine with You're No Saint. Okay. Yeah, I just have to scroll up okay, a bit in the is. chat. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, a mother's faith is tested when her recovering dog attempts to come in, leak out from her gate to reveal a whirlwind of bodies. Does she follow him to a graveyard under her eyes to turn him into a tree? Question mark? Is there a question mark at the end? Okay. Yeah, a question mark. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's all good. Right, no worries. All right, so this is action suspense survival so if we could narrow this down to two genres instead of three what do you mostly see this as suspense and survival okay that makes sense suspense and survival comps are these the titles of other movies petty criminals and parolees are those movies okay so if you don't know pro probably not right so we're trying to pick titles so you would pick like you know Die Hard meets the the Graduate, or what? Like the, not those specific titles, but you got to just pick two movies for the the comp. So I'm sure you'll be able to think of something. All right, a mother's faith is tested when her recovering drunk addict son, a week out on probation, reveals a world-ending prophecy. Does she follow him into a dark underworld which she claims will be safe? Can you explain what that sentence means? So the dark underworld. Yeah, what are we getting at there?
That's okay. Yeah, yeah. So I like that. I that's a cool idea. I think you're. So we'll start with the inciting incident, though, for the most time, for the most part. I think the inciting incident is him having the vision, right? So when her son has an apocalyptic vision, a adjective mother. So we want to describe the character, right? And um, it uh, you can describe the character. You can describe people in lots of different ways, um, which means that we have to pick the way that's most relevant for the story that we're in. Um, so you might say something like, you know, if she's a if, if it's, like, relevant that she's a survivalist or a detective or something, you might say something like, you know, a blank survivor. Like, you can describe someone in terms of their job, or you can describe someone in terms of their relationship. You could say, like, you know, a grieving mother or, like, an aging widower or something like that, which tells us what is their relationship going to be to another character here. So just think of how, how would you maybe describe this character. Like, what is something she's... The adjective can often be something that the character is struggling with. Um, and it might be if, is, if faith being tested is at the core of the movie, then it could be something like uh, she's a doubting Catholic, right? Or something like that. Um, and that might be that I can start to picture the story a little more because now this journey of trying to, I'm not exactly sure what her goal is. Let me get to that in a second. But the journey that she's on is going to be her trying to re like reckon with these questions of faith. Like it, right? So it's going to be her, her faith is being tested is going to be at the heart of the internal journey. I totally get that. I just want to know, what is she trying to do here? I don't think I'm really entirely deciding yet. I think it's just, um, she wants to be supportive and uh, she wants to help So as a, so you say suspense and survival, right? So are their lives in danger? Why are their lives in danger if there's no actual world-ending event? Or is there? Okay, okay, but if it's towards the end, that's not really telling us what we're going to be doing. Like, what challenges are we going to be overcoming during the movie? So it's okay if you don't know, if you don't, if you're still figuring out the answers to this. Yeah, but let me just give you a, an example. Um, so this might be something like when her son has an apocalyptic vision, um, a you know doubting Catholic is she. He drags her into the sewers, and now they need to escape. Or it might be like uh, once he takes her down there, then the apocalypse actually starts, and now they have to survive until they find a, sh the, a place to hide. Or it might be they're trying to seek out a. Um, he prophesized a place that would be safe for them, and they're trying to reach that as like they're destination so it's going to be more like a travel based story right where we're trying to head through these cave system or these tunnels or whatever it is so try to just give us that tangible goalpost and we will we will understand the story as like all, what we're trying to do is mostly imply the internal journey by telling us the external one so we'll totally get all that stuff about faith and overcoming you know um the her, her doubts or, or whatever it is or like i guess questioning is this stuff real should i be doing this all of this stuff we, we totally get that but we'll need the external specifics first like the concrete specifics of what is the character trying to do what's standing in the way and if you're telling us suspense and survival that stuff should really be at the forefront so we should we should not leave wondering wait why are they in danger right it should be we need to get through hordes of mutant rats or there's a bunch of other people taking shelter in the tunnels too that are going to be a problem in some way or she's being chased by their jealous ex or some you see something that's just like an antagonist or just clarify the obstacles but this sounds cool i like the i like the basics of this you should maybe check out a movie called take shelter which is a drama with michael shannon from um like 2012 or 13 i think um it's not it's not exactly like this but it um just involves you know characters predicting the end times and stuff and it's just a really good drama and maybe it could be one of your comps any questions on this one? No, not yet. Okay. Yeah, no, no problem. You might, yeah, just cook, cook, put it back in the oven for a little while. Do a little more cooking, and I'm sure by next class you'll have a much clearer picture of this. Thank you. Thank you. Also, great title. All right, so let's see. Do I, how many do we have more? Churchill says, do we have time to do mine? I think we do, unless there's any more.
Yeah, okay, let's do Joe Tolls. This is an update of the one from last time. Um, go ahead and read this out for us. Are you there, Joe? I'm seeing your mic unmuting, I'm just not hearing voice. Might need to reconnect. Oh, I hear you now. Go ahead. There you go. All good? Um, yeah, I mean, it's an update, not necessarily an upgrade, so we'll see. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I'll just read all of it. Fuck it. Um, mm -hmm. Rumored to be a lead suspect after his favorite painting goes missing on his watch. An obsessed, socially anxious security guard must use the contents of a mysterious suitcase and the help of a naive actress to slowly build his social status to interrogate his suspicious co-workers and retrieve the artwork before it is replaced by a potential new artist. So, there's a lot there. Yeah, there's a lot here. <laughs> um, the first half of this, I think, is quite strong. I love the idea that he used to use the contents of a mysterious suitcase. That's some secret sauce. That's, what, that's what's going to bring people in and go, oh, okay, now I'm interested. Um, but then the second half of this gets kind of complicated and a little bit intangible build his social status to interrogate his so i would lose the part about building his status that might sort of be implied in the that's kind of the whole point of the movie though which is kind of why i'm struggling to not put it there like the only thing i can think of to like explain it is it's like he wants to be his whole thing is he wants to be an artist or he wishes he could be an artist he's remaining a security guard so he can sort of like be in that environment without having to like commit to it the idea is like He's like about to get like fired. He's about to get kicked out of home. So he finds this like suitcase and he takes it home because he's gonna like use it to put all his clothes in and like leave. He's prepared to like have to move out essentially. And then after this painting goes missing, like it really like seals the deal for him. He thinks like he's fucked. And so he opens he opens his suitcase like right as he thinks he has to leave to like put it in. There's money in it. And so his whole attitude sort of changes. And so. He, like, tries to use this money uh, to sort of... Um, he tries to use this money, and he tries to use the help of this actress to sort of, like, rebuild an appearance and an act of confidence so that he can sort of, like, interrogate these people so that it's surely... But really, the whole story is about him sort of trying to gain acceptance from these people. Like, he's motivated to try to be an artist so that he can get people to admire him. The same way he wants to sort of use... All the contents of this of this suitcase, um, he just wants someone to like just pay attention to him essentially. And so, like, I don't know how to imply that without losing. I don't know. I put I put as much as I possibly could in it just so you to try to like give as much information to see what you could be reduced. Mm -hmm. into. I think the basis of this sounds to me something like after the painting goes missing on his watch. An obsessed, socially anxious security guard, which is a good way of describing him, must use the contents of a mysterious suitcase and the help of a naive actress to find it. Um, everything yeah. besides that just kind of makes that maybe I think there could be more going on in the script, but for the purposes of a log line, we just need to get it as simple as possible. Okay. Yeah, because I, I yeah I did notice it was convoluted in it a little bit, but I did I did. The only reason I think I put it in there was because I, I wasn't sure whether or not the idea of him. I, like the, the fact that he wants to get this painting, he wants to paint a painting to to put in this gallery. Like that's his whole desire. So he's simultaneously trying to like bring back his coping mechanism, comfort zone, whilst trying to replace it. And so I just wasn't sure if that sort of like confusion would be something that would be worth putting into like. Add. It just seems like it's adding confusion to the audience as opposed. To yeah, <laughs> I I would leave it out. I think it's just it's. Um... It doesn't sound essential to a logline. It might be nuanced for the script, but in terms of a logline, we just need the bare essential elements. Um, so we have main character, we have the situation he's in, we have the flaw he's struggling with, we have a central relationship. I think it's all pretty much in, in this version here. Um, I can copy and paste this in the chat, and you don't have to use this if you don't want to, but this would just be my recommendation to reduce it to something as simple as this. Sure, and that's not... I, I can't actually... I didn't see... Oh, I paste. It's in the chat. 
Okay, cool. And this is something you think is perfectly acceptable <laughs> as is, or...? Um, yeah, like, well, I mean, after his favorite painting goes missing on his watch, he must use the contents of a mysterious suitcase. Um, yeah, that works for me. Alright, cool. Play around with it. Yeah, yeah, play around with it a little more, adjust it as needed, but, um, I think we had about twice as many words as we as we needed, so try to just cut down on words, make it, like, one simple, clear conflict right at the heart of it, even if there's more going on. We can get to that in the script. Just we're trying to bring people in and get them to read this, and they're probably going to do that if they understand what the movie is and and just like the very basics. Okay, cool. So, do you, uh, 